This is Wobby Wallaby. Today, I'm going to cover dorm farming in Komodo. I'll show you how you can earn more than 13.39 million zenny per day. Of that total, 9.85 million is raw zenny. I will go through my build so you can see how to achieve this. I'll also show you how to farm more optimally with tips throughout the video. Daikasi from my guild Zenith summarized it perfectly when he said for optimizing farming, it is basically three things. First, one hit kills. Two, cast delay and cool down. Three, move speed. These are things that you can control. What you can't control as much is how busy the maps are. You need to farm when there's less people around, especially if it's filled with stealth hunters or gunslingers. Why farm Komodo? Right now, Komodo is my favorite farming spot. You can earn great raw zenny, have map buffs for better farming, have materials you can use towards ancient equipment, and have sellable materials too. Make sure you unlock all your Cloudsea Archipelago buffs to gain better farming efficiency and increase drop rate. If you need a guide to unlock these farming buffs, see my Cloudsea Archipelago guide. The link will be in the description. Next, I'll examine the target so you know how to optimize the gear against them. There are three of interest on the Komodo maps. I find they are densely packed and ideal for Dorum's AoE. The first is Alligator. It has over 1 million HP, is Water Element, Brute, and Medium. I like Alligators because they drop Final Dust and Rough Elunium. The second monster is First Seal. It has over 1 million HP, is Water Element, Brute, and Medium. I like First Seals because they are densely packed in maps and drop sticky candy. If you have the overpriced skill from multiclassing, the wall paint is a nice drop for selling to NPCs. The third creature is Nigel Birds. It has over 1 million HP, is Wind Element, Brute, and Small. I like Nigel Birds because it drops Dark Light Amber and is a different element type than the other two creatures. Next, I'll look at gear and cards. Optimizing your farming depends on what gear you have and how strong you are. I have included some free to play friendly gear, gear that's for weaker people that need to deal more damage, and gear that's for stronger dorms who can sacrifice damage for more optimal farming. First, a look at offhand items. If you don't have near 130% ignore defense, you may want to use gear like the Rosa Chain or the Ancient Equipment Voodoo Blade. Ideally, your Voodoo Blade has the Ignore Defense as a random attribute. If you have enough Ignore Defense but lack damage, then use the Helion Bracelet or the Ancient Equipment Eagle Flute. Ideally, your Eagle Flute has physical damage increase as its random attribute. If you're strong enough, you can use the Life Magic Book and the Bunny Slipper combo. That gives you a cooldown of all skills shortened by 5%. You'll need to give up your foot gear as well for this combo so only use this if you're strong enough. Next are offhand cards. I would use the Aqua Element card against Alligators and Fur Seals since they are water monsters. Against Nigel Birds, I'd use the Luciola Vespa card since Nigel Birds are wind monsters. Next is Armor. You could use God's Blessings since it gives lots of HP. Alternatively, the Dragon Scale Armor Ancient Equipment is good. The physical damage increase or damage to large monsters are the ideal random attributes to get. The Dragon Scale Armor is the most free to play friendly as it will boost your damage without requiring you to buy something expensive from the exchange. For cards, I think the Moonex Star for Ignore Defense is the best, since these creatures have high defense. Alternatively, you can use the Seroma card against alligators and fur seals, or the Pekka Pekka card for HP percentage for free to play players as this is a cheap generic damage increasing card against all monsters. Next for Garment, you can use Ancient Cape or the White Duke's Manteau for Ignore Defense. The Ancient Cape is a free to play friendly garment as you may not need the synthesis version of the White Duke's Manteau to one shot creatures here. Next for Cards, 
the Rowing card is best versus Alligators and Fur Seals. For Nigel Birds, the Orc Zombie Star card is good for the extra damage that comes from the 3000 HP. Next are Foot Gears. The Elegant Dorm Shoe is free to play friendly. It doesn't have to be high refined for it to be good. The synthesis of the Elegant Dorm Shoes is a kitten ankle spell, which is good if you lack damage. If you use the Life Magic Book for offhand, your footgear will be the bunny slipper. For cards, the Fire Remain for 3% move speed is nice. If you lack damage, then the Ferris card for more HP percentage is good too. The higher the move speed, the better. There are other cards that provide higher move speed, but they are more expensive. Next are accessories. I would either use a Dog Servant or Survival Ring. Survival Ring is cheaper, so it's more free to play friendly. You also get a lot more health, which goes towards damage. For cards, the Moonlight Tendrillon card is great, since it gives you skill damage. If you're stronger, use the Mimic card for a 3% chance to get an extra 8 zenny while killing a target. It doesn't stack, so only use one of these cards. Next is Weapon. Use the Fine Pink Fox Grass as our farming skills use Lunatic Carapound and Savage Soul, so the Wand is great for this. For cards, if you have a large monster damage modifier and lack Ignore Defense, you'd likely be using two Minoris cards to get the 50% Ignore Defense inside effect. If you have enough Ignore Defense but could use more damage, then use the Element Type cards for extra damage. If you have enough Ignore Defense but want move speed, then use two Magic Pattern Paper cards for 10% more move speed. Next, for Headwear. If you lack Ignore Defense, you'd probably be using the Glacier Power or Abyssal Cry to activate the Minoris Insight effect. If you got your armor to give you damage to large monsters, then you can use the Crocodile Head Cover to deal extra damage to water monsters. If you're strong enough, then use the Truancy King Hat for 4% move speed. For Headgear Card, the Andre Star Card is the best for penetration and percentage, but it's quite expensive. For free to play players, I use the Mimi Monster card for more decks. Any other damage increasing cards or things that add HP are good too. Next is Face. The Epic Spirit Lightning is really good versus Alligators and Fur Seals if you use the Wind Converter. Silent Sinking is another alternative, which is good versus all monsters because it adds skill damage. Ideally, if you have this getcha, Use the Sugar Content Uncertainty for a 5% chance to earn an extra 20 zenny when you kill a target. For Mouth, the free to play friendly Mouth is the Abyss Whisper. For stronger dorms, the Moon Hound's Tail is good. You have to do the Moon Lake Quest storyline to buy this, and it provides 4% move speed. Next are back items. The Devil Wings is great, but requires you to do Annoying Glassheim quests. Alternatively, the Snowstorm Wings for the VIT and max HP percentage is good. Optimally, the Gacha one eyed Captain is the best. Having unlimited SP and 30% increase in move speed makes it one of the best farming gears ever in the game. If you don't have one eyed Captain, the Gacha Fate Wheel is good since it reduces the skill cooldown by 10%. I've tested both of them and I find one eyed Captain is slightly better than Fate Wheel since the significant difference in move speed is more optimal than the skill cooldown. Next are Tails. The free to play friendly Tails are the Ice Ridge Sculpture for Ignore Defense, or the Sea Soul Tail for boosting elemental damage if you're using Converter to farm. Optimally, you can use Gacha Tails to decrease skill delay like Panel Guardian, or Tails to increase move speed like Back to the Future. Next, I'll show what my character uses. For offhand, I use the Life Magic Book. For armor, I use the Dragon Skill Armor with the Moonex Star card. For Garment, I use the White Duke's Manteau with the Rowene card. For Footgear, I use the Bunny Slippers. For my first accessory, I use the Dog Servant with the Mimic card. For my second accessory, I use the Survival Ring with the Moonlight Tendrillon card. For weapon, I use the fine pink fox grass with two magic pattern paper cards. 
For headwear, I use the Truancy King hat. For face, I use the Epic Spirit Lightning. For mouth, I use the Moon Hound's Tail. For back, I use One-Eyed Captain. For tail, I use Panel Guardian. For Ancient Relic, I use Wei Sai. This is a good generic Ancient Relic for physical damage classes. Dora may also want to use the other Ancient Relic, Valkyrie's Protection, for the Vitality and Ignore Defense. Next, for Oracle Mirror, I have the Claw with 5% attack activated. Next are Guild Buffs and Acer Monument. For Guild Prayers and Blessings, getting as much HP as possible is good. Penetration Percentage and Ignore Defense are also high priorities. The Wind and Earth damage are nice as well. For Acer Monument, try to get as much HP Percentage, Vitality, and HP as possible. Make sure you max out the nodes for Life Soul, Savage Soul, Lunatic Carrot Pound, and Lunatic Gunner. Here are my character stats with all that gear. I have 986,000 HP. My attack is at 11,000. My penetration is at 47%. My skill damage increase is at 9%. My damage percentage is at 63.8%. My physical damage increase is at 101%. My ignore defense is low at 106.3%, but my damage is high enough with the wind converters to one-shot everything. For attributes, I had maxed out vitality, then a balance of agility and dex. Finally, here is my handbook deposits, since some people are interested in that. With all the stuff I showed for my character, I don't think the Komodo is hard to farm. I have a free-to-play dorm with gear that's much worse than that, barely any guild blessings, and terrible deposits. But she can still farm there. All you have to do is switch to damage increasing gear, cards, and food. Also, make sure your ignore defense percentage is higher. She has over 140% ignore defense. Once you can comfortably one-shot everything, that's when you start optimizing your gear, cards, and food. Next for advanced ruins, you must try to get a good Meow Hunter rune. Mine gives me a 68% chance to refresh the skill cooldown. The extra move speed per target kill is also nice too. Another ruin that affects farming is Savage Assault, which can give you a lower cooldown time. If you use a Curled Beetle Charge, the Buggy Quick Strike can grant you more move speed. Here are my total minor ruin effects. Next, what food should I eat? Besides converters and A or B meals, we can optimize with the cooked foods we consume. If you need more damage, then Satisfied Feast is great for the penetration percentage and the attack boost. If you're stronger, you can use the original Will Salad for decreasing cast delay or the original Will Fish Steak for faster move speed. Next for skills, I just have Lunatic Carapound, Savage Soul, and Lunatic Gunner in my auto attack slot. I do not put Prepare for Elite with buffs in it because I do not need those skills to do more damage. Instead of wasting time casting Prepare for Elite, I'd rather be casting a skill that kills a monster. Next, where should you farm in Komodo? It can get very busy, so I'll show you a few of my favorite spots. First is Frost Valley. The entrance is good for Nigel birds. My preferred spot is the middle or top 
to get first seals. I find they are very dense in these areas. This map does have an MVP, so you do have to check up on your character during the MVP time to make sure it didn't die to the boss. Alternatively, another map is the Darklight Forest. I farm for Nigel birds in this spot. If you move near the middle of the map, there's a nice dense alligator spot too. I find this spot is better for alligators than in Frost Valley. An advantage to this map is that there's no minis or MVPs, so you don't have to worry about dying to bosses. Next, I'll show an example of my farming run. Here's my starting Zenny and bag. Here's my start on combat time. Each day I listen to 30 minutes of music to get 90 minutes of combat time, and then I use 6 mentor potions to get me a total of 720 minutes of combat time. For food, I eat 6 original will salads for the Castile decrease. With my foods, gear, and the Cloudsy Archipelago buffs, you can see that the cast cooldown and the cast delay have gone down a lot from my various skills. I eat wind converters because I sacrifice a lot of damage with my gear. This is to ensure my lunatic gunner can one-shot things. I choose the top of Frost Valley to farm for fur seals. Now I switch to offline farming. I farm until 870 combat time, which puts me into red stamina. I teleport to Geffen first, and then switch to my Begetter to use my overpriced skill so I earn 24% more from Quick Sell. Here are my drops in my bag. In addition, I sell the wall paint to the NPC for some extra zenny. I highly recommend you do this since you get a lot of wall paint from killing fur seals. Here's a summary of my results. I get more than 13.39 million zenny per day. Of that, 9.85 million is raw zenny. Even if you can't sell the materials, they are great for refining and socketing ancient equipment yourself. I hope you learned some techniques to optimize your dorm farming and also learn how profitable Komodo can be. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe.